I'm your host, Joel Brown, and I am here today with Wealth Mindset Coach, international speaker, and absolute game changer, also featured star of the new Think and Grow movie. This is Derek Mills. Derek, welcome to the Attempt to Success podcast. Hi, Joel. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. It's great to have you, man. Uh, we had the opportunity to meet for the first time uh, in LA at the Think and Grow Rich movie premiere. And uh, you know, it's funny, I, I felt like I got to kind of know you a little bit by seeing you on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you just absolutely uh, rocked it in the movie. Oh, cheers, and <laughs> I'm just so excited for the world to see that movie, man. I, I don't know how you feel, but I, I'm just so excited for the world. To see I, it. I feel that it's, it's far from being a privilege just to be in the movie because it's that kind of yeah. thing where if you told me when I was in my mid twenties that the book I was reading to change my life around <laughs> would I'd be featured in 25 years later, I'd be saying probably not <laughs> even, <laughs> even, even whilst reading the book, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah, right. really excited about it. I'm excited for, for a couple of reasons. One is to, to get that visual, um, aspect of the book with the 21st century leaders, experts, and teachers to, to you know, for those people who read the book, over the last 20, 30, 40 years um, and get them re-engaged with the works. Um, but really what's most exciting is getting the, the, the millennials and younger people to, to pick it up, read it and make a difference because the principles do not change. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. I remember when I was younger, uh, 20, so I'm 30 now, 20 years old. Yeah. I was sitting in a car in the middle of the desert of Western Australia, listening to Think and Grow Rich. And it was inspiring me to stick to my dreams, mm -hmm. you know, to really uh, stay committed to the business, to raise my standards. I know you like to talk a lot yeah, about yeah. raising standards That's and it's such do. an important thing. It's the key. Yeah, and, I'll it, it's such it's such a key thing, and you know I remember those principles. They're timeless. Uh, so it's awesome that we got called to be a part of that movie. I can't wait for the world to see it. But let's talk about you, man. I remember okay. uh, seeing a video of you. I think it was probably uh, it's probably like only a, about a week back. Uh, so I, I, I after seeing you in the movie, the Thing Grow Rich movie, I was doing a little bit of research to see what you've been up to. Mm. It's funny, I saw you speaking with uh, Bernardo Moya, who I also had the oh, opportunity Bernardo. to connect with about six years ago in the UK. I was doing wow. a an NLP 10-day workshop <laughs> with Richard Bandler, yeah. and Bernardo was there. I think he was holding the workshop in. And uh, yeah, he d does quite a lot of interviews. And uh, to see you jamming out with him and the things mm. that you talked about, I was like, man, I really need to get Derek on the a to s podcast to really share you know your your perspectives man on what it means to really uh set your standards and to receive better outcomes in life by setting those standards and the right standards so t tell me a little bit about the standards revolution and tell okay. us like what what it means to set standards in your life yeah okay i think what, what the key things it's um people talk about standards and just for clarification we're not talking about iso this or in the UK, we call it BS. <laughs> uh, BS. <laughs> this is around something quite different, whether it's a personal or a corporate thing, um, and it's, it's quite. Rev it is revolutionary and somewhat controversial. Um, but if not for that one thing, I wouldn't be in the Thinking Grow Rich movie. So when when I when I realized realized after setting uh, goals for seventeen years using all the models, I've been on Robbins, I've been on the read the Tracy books and and everything else. I, I, the old guy Zig Ziglar, love him to bits. Never met him, but love. You can just hear his voice through his works. And um, so I did all that, set my goals. But you know what? <clears throat> started doing that when I was 20. 17 years later, I was still broke and depressed. <laughs> so I realized, you know, that is it, is it weird? Is it, is, it, is it me? Is something there that you know, after setting all these goals by these amazing gurus and saying, set your goals? Because that's what they tell you, isn't it, Joel? They say to be successful, yes. the bottom line is any stage you've shared or I've shared anywhere in the world, that the gurus tell you, if you want to be successful, you got to set your goals. And when I take to stages around the world, I, the, the question I add, add on to that when I hear that, um, I say to the audience, and how's that working out for you? <laughs> because, because what I know <laughs> yeah. is, that, is, that, is that most people who set goals don't achieve them. The stats have been done, Harvard, and there's a million studies you can look at. So what I realize actually is that um, goal setting works, but there's something else. Because, and this is the bit where it comes a bit, hey, you know, it, it, a bit different and a bit revolutionary, and that is that... Um, Goals don't achieve goals. Uh, Goal, yes. Goals don't achieve goals. They never have. 
goals of a goal has never achieved a goal. See, the goal doesn't achieve, determine anything. What achieves the goal or determines your failure or success is the daily standards that we live by each day. Not just not just the standards, but the daily standards that we live by. So if you set a goal to be, this is really simple and everybody gets it, I know you're into fitness. So if you set a goal, uh, you know, to be, to, to run a, a mile in six minutes and to be 15% body fat, I don't know if that's good or bad for you, I don't know. Say 10% body fat, 10% <laughs> body fat, and to be able to bench press 250, whatever. If you set that goal, and you can vision board it, you can go on all the programs you want, you can write it in your journal. But actually, if what you're doing is lying on the couch each day, daily, and you're eating deep fried Snickers, daily and you're eating pizza daily and you're not moving very much each day then no matter what you visualize no matter what you do what you write down it's your daily standards that determine your success or achievement of that goal so it's as if to say why don't we set the goal and then then let it go and live by the daily standards and that's why i change things because the daily standards determine us they determine our success or our failure we're determined not by our goals we're determined by our daily standard it's not going to change to me 17 years to figure it out yeah, I mean, that makes total sense. I remember sitting in a room with Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, mm. and I remember him challenging me on the spot, and he asked me, Joel, do you have goals? And at that point in time, I was kind of in these crossroads in my life. I, I was trying to find, like, really pinpoint my passion and my calling, and, and I said to him, you know, no, I don't really have goals. And he said, great, that's, that's totally fine. He said, goals are good for short-term achievements, but you need a vision. Okay. You want long-term yeah. success, you need that vision. Mm. And part of the vision process too is setting your standards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I love that you, uh, you really hone in on this. Uh, and, and you're right, man. It's like, uh, I, what do you think uh, about the idea of sharing your goals with other people? I've heard people say it's not a good thing. I've heard other people say you've got to announce your goals. What's your take on that? Yeah, I know Napoleon Hill says, tell the world what you intend to do, but first show it. And I, I can curl, I remember I used to have that, uh, I, I t- typed it out and then I um, cut it out on a piece of paper and I laminated it. And I used to keep that on my desk for many, many, many years. I just keep shut, keep shut, mm. just get on with it and do it. And I understand that. Um, and I haven't come to a conclus- conclusion as to whether that was, was good or bad. What I do know for 17 years, I didn't achieve the goals anyway. The ones I talked about, I didn't get them. The ones I didn't talk about, <laughs> I didn't get them because you don't achieve the goals until you change your behavior. See, goals are a behavioral thing. And behavior, of course, as we yes. know, is internal in terms of our attitude, our approach, our mindset. That's also behavior, just what we, we call internal behaviors. Um, then have the external behaviors, what you do, who you're around, who you're talking to, what you're reading, um, what you do with your family, your health, all these things. You, if I look at, here's the thing. Apologies for my extra excitement here. But if I, if I, could, I could look at a guy or a girl and say, look, what are your goals? And they'll tell me their goals. And then I could, I could monitor that person for a day in work or in life or in business or in relationships or in their health, whatever. In fact, a 12-year-old could monitor that person for a day and see how they live their day. And that 12-year-old coach could say, sorry, mister, but you're not going to achieve your goals if, you're, if that's what you're doing each day. And that's the key thing. So it never is about the goal, the achievement of the goal. This is repetitious. I hear, I know this, and I say it a million times a year. But actually, what we want to focus on is the daily standards of being. So your goal says going to do. A goal says one day. You know, and what we do, because it gets really critical, um, which is why I fell from being deeply unhappy into uh, like a depression. I, know I didn't go to the doctor for the diagnosis, but you know you know. And, and I fell into this depression because I've been trying to achieve these goals, not getting them. And it actually made me feel worse, you know, not, not better. Because what I was doing, and this is really, really um, key to the emotional impact of goals without the right daily standards. Because you need the daily standards to achieve the goal. And this, what I used to do when I set goals, those goals, I'd say, in next months, weeks, or years' time, when I've got that car, that house, that amount of money, that position, that person in my life, I'm living in that place, then I'll be happy. Right, and, I said, and that's right. everybody does. And I've spoken like you, audiences around the world, and I ask them, so tell me about your goals. And they say, the house and the car, millionaire, blah, 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 billionaire, whatever. And I say to them, and when you get that goal, or the billion pounds, or the house, or the car, blah, blah, you will be, and they will say, happy. And I say, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> but therein lies the problem, because you're now attaching your happiness to a future achievement. Happiness is a present time experience. 
we can only be happy wow. in the now. You can't be happy next month, next year, three years, 20 years, 40 years. It's a present time experience. So, mm. and, and then it gets worse because I'm sorry to just dump this on people, but what if by, by throwing out your happiness, you know, we, we, you and I, we've both met people that say, Joel, don't you dare get me to be happy. I'll be happy when I've got that car and that first million <laughs> and the 50,000 a month client and the blah, then I'll be happy, mate. That's when I'll do it. And the, ta- the thing is, just consider this, just play this for a while. And that is that what if in doing that approach, we attach happiness to the future achievement and A, we don't achieve the goals. What happens to the happiness? And the second thing is, is there a danger that we're removing or reserving happiness from today and sticking it out there in the future that never comes? So what does it do to our happiness today? This is my f- deep thoughts and was stretching me and pulling me and tearing me from all the teachings I had in the previous years. And I just said, something's missing. And that's what turned my light and my life around. Wow. Wow. That wow, makes wow. <laughs> no, that makes, that makes a ton of sense. I, I love this. I, I want to ask you this question because uh, my girlfriend and I were talking the other day and we, we are both like type A personalities. So as you can imagine, we're both very, we can be very intense when we're like talking about our, our vision and our, what our focus. Yes. And what we've discovered with each other is that we seem to be in a, a, a happier mood, I guess, uh, at the end of the day, if we have made prog- progress, if we have progression going on growth right? Uh, So we check in with each other and share our to-do lists and kind of, you know, what are you doing today? Okay, what are you up to today? And at the end of the day, like throughout the day, we push each other and go, okay, make sure you get it done. All right, I'll give you space to get your things done because we know at the end of the day, we're going to be in a happier mood. Mm. What's your take on that? I think what's what's important here is that um, if the people around you are the right type of people, family, girlfriends, boyfriends, all the rest of it, husbands and wives, um, then you'll be happy along the day because we can only be happy in the moment. It's, it's not theory. It's, it's fact. You can't, you can't be happy even at right. nine o'clock tonight. You can only be happy in this moment because it's a present time experience. It's a now experience. But I love yeah. the idea that you've shared there about sharing your vision with somebody else, sharing your intentions with somebody else and the right somebody else. Because when you share them with the right somebody else, they add to that energy, that they add to, to your happiness in the moment right. as you're experiencing it. And yes. every one of us has, has noticed when we, if we do the day differently, if we just say, listen, we're going to be miserable as sin until, we, until 12 o'clock tonight when the goal is achieved. We're going to check the bank account and if there's a million pounds in there, we'll celebrate at 12 o'clock. Here's a <laughs> quick question. You look at your bank account at 12 o'clock. How long does 12 o'clock last? Not very long. <laughs> 12 o'clock does not last very long because then it's, you know, you've moved on and happiness is in that moment, the instant you happen, we want people to achieve their goals, happier and then they go, hmm, now what? And then they go, why do I need to seek now to get happy again? It's about the day, Joel. It's about the day. You know, in the Bible, uh, G- uh, Jesus said, he said, um, he gave us his Lord's Prayer. And, um, you know, people around the world will, will know it and the, the, the Lord's Prayer. And in the middle of that Lord's Prayer, four words kept resonating with me. Once I woke up a few years ago, which changed my whole life, the daily standards came to me then I realized actually the daily was so key because goals are future based. And it, it, what he said in this Lord's prayer, he said four words, give us this day, give us this yes. day. No, she did uh. not say, give us this week, give us this month, give us this quarter, give us this three year business plan, give us this 20 year program. He said, give us this day. And I think son of God and all that depends what you believe, son of God. Um, you know, he meant what he said and he said what he meant. If he, if he meant to say the week or the quarter, I'm guessing being omnipotent and all that, he'd have said so. It's about the day. It's about the day. It's about the day. Daily standards, not standard for tomorrow. You can't do your standards tomorrow, but you can be your daily standards today. And if you do the yes. right days, as you know, because you teach this stuff, that, that if you do the right days consistently enough, day after day, just for today, and you wake up tomorrow morning, just for today, stick to your standards, you will create the most compelling future, but you'll enjoy the day. Amen to that, man. I remember Jim Rohn used to say, uh, you got to run and rule the day. Otherwise the day will run you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That God bless so true. Yeah. You get ahead of it. Right. It is. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely how, true. How, how bad do you really want it? Right. Are you willing yeah. to, to get, sit down and, and really get clear on what your standards are for the day and really get clear on what your intentions are? You know, a lot of people do talk about like the law of attraction. I'm not such a big fan of that. I, I talk quite often about the law of intention. 
yes. really mapping it out, getting you on clear, this, crystal clear, man. Yeah, it's no good sitting and waiting for, you know, by chance for things to fall in your lap. It just doesn't mm. happen like that. You want results, you need to prepare. Yeah, you're right. To get those results, you have to be. You have to be. Because the way that when, when, we, when I read through the book of Think and Grow Rich, it was around um, people that got that success and broke through. They became, they became first and then the things happened around them not the other way around in no instance edward c barnes every example you've got in the book they be came first so be that person set up the energies have the right vibration have the right standards and when you have your right daily standards you know there's a, there's a funny rule i came across and I, I literally just realized that you know slow learner it took me 17 years to wake up you're far quicker than <laughs> I'm, 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 like this guy. I'm doing the 400 meters and you're there the guy doing the 100 meters now you're like the uh what's his name again um the, the big bear the... no no the, i'm the, four, the 100 oh. meters guy um you're saying bolt, bolt. You're, you're saying bolt. I'm, like, I'm like michael johnson just trying to do my 400 meters to catch you <laughs> so the is, i was a slow learner but when i learned i got something i realized you know that um the, the way the, the way that we we live um, the, these, these standards of ours, they are crucial to our, to our very, the very essence of, of who we are. If we don't have the right standards in our life, then the world will, teach, will meet us at that place. Let me say that a bit clearer. Let's suppose that our daily standards determine our success, because they do. And let's suppose that the scale of our daily standards are between zero to 10. And as a, a philosophical point of view, then we all come into this world as a 10. You know, I'm a 10. You're a 10. Everyone listening is a 10. You came into this world 10 out of 10. But the challenge is that in times in our life, in our relationships, our business and our friends and and whatever, we show up as a three. And we show up as a four. Now, here's the thing. It's an unkind rule, but I wasn't there when the rules were made. And if you show up as a three in the world, the world treats you as a three. It meets you as a three. It engages you as a three. And you're wondering, why is my life so so three? Well, it's because you're showing up as a three. And I know you're a 10 but you're showing up as a three. So what I mean by that is the daily standards of your interactions, who your friends are, the language that you use, the attitude, your family, your emotions, your career, your time and money, your personal health and fitness. These are all the areas we set standards in the crucial areas that I I train people on and coach on. If you shift your daily standards from a three to a four or five, you're going to sign yourself meeting people who are fives. And then if you you raise your standards over time, your fees, your charges, your relationships, the health, the food you're eating to a seven, you're going to suddenly find that, and this is the unfair bit, the sevens will begin to engage you when you're a seven. You see, the sevens don't deal with threes. I'm sorry to, you've got to hear that, but sevens don't deal with threes. Sevens engage sevens. So you've got to show up as a seven. And how, how do you show up as a seven? Put aside the philosophy for a second. How do you show up as a seven? You set and leave your daily standards at a seven. And then sevens will see you. And these are the same sevens with those multi-million pound checks that have been walking past you that just did not see you energetically, experientially, philosophically, did not see you because you weren't a seven. Remember, you were born a 10, but you were showing up as a three. So how do you do it? Raise your standards, live by them day by day, just one day at a time. And sixes and sevens and eights and nines will begin to see you. And when they see you and engage you and interact with you, everything changes for you absolutely everything oh man mind blowing <laughs> i love it because it's like it's straightforward but it's so so needed uh i, I want to know how i can be an 11 <laughs> right it's a, I, and this is the thing like, and you, <laughs> when i know this man like no one's perfect right but but also uh, I think a lot of people want these things, right? They see it and they, they, they uh, beat themselves up and they say, oh, you know, I, am I worthy of that? And this comes down to the whole self-worth thing. Yeah. How does this work, man? Because I know that if you don't sacrifice what you want, what you want becomes uh, the sacrifice at the end of the day. It's like you want these things, but if you're not willing to really work for it, you're not going to get it. Uh, but, but to go a little bit like a layer deeper or even to the core, mm-hmm. A lot of it is self-worth. Like I'm not going to set a high standard if I don't believe that I'm even worthy of that standard. So how do we work with brilliant question? Because, you know, uh, Joel, um, there's a few years ago when I charged my clients, my um, financial services, wealth clients, administration fees, and those administration fees were really low. Let's say 149 pounds. That's what it was. And I charged 149 pounds administration fee because that's what I was worthy at. 
Well, that's what I was right. worthy of. And, and, and this is and this is such a uh, just to, to cut in here real quick. This is such an important conversation because we do have a lot of speakers and coaches and authors and that that are like listening to this podcast right now. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are struggling with price points. What do I charge? What am I worth? So yeah. I love it. Keep going. It was brilliant. I mean, it's, you've got it. It's a reflection of being a you. Because your daily standards come from inside of you. Your life is run by your daily standards, whether you're conscious of them or whether you're unconscious of them. It's a, it's, think about them as, a, as your subroutines. But as the programmer, you get to change those subroutines if you want to. But if you're internally saying, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, then you're going to be able to charge, as I did, £149 a year for, for admin, uh, for clients. And then I realized, you know what? I got to a place where I went inside myself because this is a reflective moment. This isn't, this isn't an egoic moment. It isn't a mind conversation. It isn't even about thinking. It's about mm. the feeling inside. Who am I really? Is this who I am? Is that what I'm meant to be? Is this what I'm worth? What else is there about me that, that, that I can get out into the world? And as the birds sing for us in the morning, we can look at ourselves in the morning we can, and we can say to ourselves, yeah, you know, absolutely you know, wake up and realize what's happening in my life and who I really am. Because when you think about the, the 149 fee that I was charging, it was actually it was a reflection of me. It was the mirror saying, I'm only worth this amount of money. At the same time, when I then made a decision around changing my fees, I, I was really changing who I was on the inside. So when I started to change my fees, I said, actually, I'm going to charge 249 a year. And clients that didn't pay me 249 before began to pay me 249. Then I started to charge 497 and then 997 and then 2497 and in some cases almost 10,000 pounds 9,997 pounds a year just for the admin so was what I was doing there is that I was raising my standards inside as my confidence grew I raised the standards and this is yes. important because if you said to me Joel day one Derek and they charging 149 pounds from now on go out there and charge between two and a half thousand and ten thousand pounds a year I wouldn't have bought into that I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have believed it could right. have been part of, of my truth. So that the best analogy to consider this is to, is to consider the staircase. Unless you live in a bungalow, if you're at home, if this is about your fees and your coaching fees and your consultancy fees and your mentoring fees, if you live in a bungalow, you can't jump the stairs. But let's suppose you live in a house. If you go to your house and look at the bottom of the stairs, go, look at the top. The top of the stairs is where you really want to be. That You might call that your goal. But if you try and leap the whole of the stairs in one go, you better film me to put it on YouTube because you're not going to make it. <laughs> you're going to come so what's actually going to, what you actually do to achieve that goal at the top of the stairs is you look at the whole staircase, what you do, you go to the first step and that's the daily, you raise of yourself off the floor and you go to the first step, you raise your standards just a bit because you can believe in that. And we talk about the four C's when you see, if, if you imagined a baby at the bottom of the stairs, you know, a, a one, one year old baby in, in, a, in a baby romper, at the bottom of the stairs and you, you, your mom's behind the, the dad's behind and the baby's going to climb the stairs and they're going to do it one step at a time but what the baby does they're nervous and their legs are shaking and they're wobbling but then they, as they go put one leg up onto the first step and get to the, to the next step and when they're on the first step they're still shaking because they're not used to this level but then yes. they, notice, they notice what you call the four c's eventually they become comfortable in that place and they stop shaking then they become competent. They can operate as good at this level as they did at the previous level. And then they become confident. And you know that because they're going to turn around and look at mom and dad and go, hey, yeah, I'm here. Look at me. I'm, look where I am. And you know that baby's now confident. And then they consolidate the fourth C's to consolidate that position because you can't go upwards unless you consolidate the back foot. So as you're on the baby, you consolidate and strengthens that back foot, puts his hands down and raises to another level. And guess what? On the next step, you, can, you do go through the same again. You get comfortable. You get competence. You get your confidence up. And then you can start it. Then you raise again. And bit by bit, the baby climbs the stairs. Is this oh, awesome? man. Yeah, that's such a good breakdown. Uh, I've heard an analogy where it says, like, you got to stretch. I mean, it's so cliche, but, like, stretch into the comfort zone, uh, outside of the comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, like, stretch, stretch to a certain degree where it's, like, enough for you to feel that like uncomfortability but don't stretch too much because you'll snap yeah right Absolutely. so it's like that little bit of stretch each day yeah and that's the thing like, if you can look at it as a small percentage is yeah. you're, you're good it is yeah but you asked the question about that uh, when people don't feel it on the inside and the way to feel it on the inside is you, you you can feel it on the inside on the first step you say to that baby even a you know say to an adult jump five steps they're gonna go 
Joel, come on, five steps. But you can just say, can you just go into the first step and start living your life in this place? And what happens, there's an accelerator because the stairs eventually become an elevator. Do you call it elevators? Uh, escalator. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, escalators, <laughs> so moving, escalators. Moving, up, so moving upstairs. Because once yeah. you get to a certain place, you get momentum. And you realize, you know what? As I raise my standards, I'm getting much more success. As I raise my standards and living at this, this, this level five and step four and step six, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling more comfortable. You actually, you, you start to, to just jump steps and you, you accelerate. Eventually, when you get momentum, the stairs start moving for you. And this is crucial. Yeah. But you, you cannot have that unless you take the first step and just do that. And by the way, this took me from being broke and depressed at the end of 2003 to making my first million by 2006, making my first million dollars in the year in 2007. All of this done by just raising my standards, raising my standards, raising my standards in the same business, in the, ve- in the same room I'm in right now. I've got this office. And before I share the office with other people, because <laughs> you know, when you can't afford much, you, you, you'll get all the people who aren't doing very well together, don't you? And uh, that's just yeah. a management strategy. But I share with other people. Now, as a senior partner at the company, the whole office is mine. But I didn't do that overnight. It's key to say this is not a get rich quick. Think and grow rich isn't get rich quick. My philosophy, that I, my book, you know, the 10-second philosophy, does not say get rich quick. It says change. Practically, mm. philosophically, change. One day at a time, raise your standards and everything will change for you. That's the truth. Yes, yes, yes. I love that you were saying like you just need to get that momentum. There's a saying that money loves momentum and mm. success loves speed. It's so yeah, yeah, I love damn that. true. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that yours? That's true. Uh, <laughs> I love that. No, I, I think someone did say it in yeah, part. Yeah. We were in like a marketing meeting and yeah. sometimes we just kind of go into flow and, and we're deep in conversation with each yeah. other and, and yeah, things come up but it, it wasn't for me originally, but I can definitely say I've lived that. Like yeah. when I have an idea, I jump in and I just launch the program. It's this whole like uh, ready fire aim approach where you yeah. just go ahead, launch <laughs> okay. it, right? Yeah. Launch it, build fire your aim. wings on the way down and so on. Yeah. And, on. yeah. And, and it's so true. Like you've got to take the action, man. And yeah. someone asked me recently, what's your, what do you think um, success really is? And I, I asked them, what do you mean by that? And like, if you could characterize it, uh, what would it be? What would you have to do? And I said, self-discipline. Like if I could really just say like one word, it yeah. would have to be okay. that self-discipline. Yeah, and that's amen. self-discipline in so many areas, but because everything yep. is touching everything, mm-hmm. but you know, setting your standards every day. I love this, yeah. man. I love it. Yeah. So just on that note of money, I want to ask yep. you real quick. I know that you uh, had interviewed 15,000 financial advisors and over uh, what was a 5,000 millionaire meetings you've had. So yeah. what did you learn in that process? What was the big standout lesson? Yeah, the, the biggest lesson from those, and it basically, uh, those interviews, which I did over the whole of my career, um, and, and we're still counting, is that um, yeah. so here's the thing, and, and it's, it's a bit depressing to be fair, but it gave me, <laughs> gave, me, gave me solutions that most people are not happy because they're not who they truly are. And you, can't be tr- and you can't be truly happy as, you can't be truly happy as not you, if that makes sense that way. You can't be happy as not you. To be happy, you've, you've, you've got to be you. So one of the things I, I realized that uh, people who, have got, who didn't have money, the first 15,000 interviews were with, were with clients, prospective clients who, who weren't millionaires. That's the first 15,000. And these people had certain standards, which I wasn't calling them standards back then, but I kept all my files and the notes so I can see how they were, how they were being each day. And it's how you be with your money that determines your financial success, of course. Because I think it was Robbins that said that, um, you know, we are, our, su- our success with money is determined by what we do with it. So something like that. But my phrase was really saying is that if you have the wrong money standards, you won't become wealthy. Because what I noticed, the wealthy had different money standards and they had different values. Because part of my research was to do a hierarchy of values with these multimillionaires. But I did the same hierarchy of values for those that had no money. And, and the difference was that those were, that were um, unsuccessful with money, we'll just call it that for now, with money, not unsuccessful in life, but with money, were those that didn't have the right. It's really it's, it was as clear as night and day. What they did with their money each day determined them. And what the wealthy wow. millionaires did, the multimillionaires did each day with their money in terms of their investing, their saving, their education piece, their knowledge, they're sharing it with their children, in other words, passing on the values as well as the valuables. And, uh, it's like so screaming out, and it's what I've been doing with, with my kids since I t- worked my life around, turned my life around about 10 years ago. And um, so that this, this is key. It's the daily standards with your money. Your, your money standards will determine your wealth. 
I want to just mention something which is important because to me, and I need to be absolutely clear here, success is not about money for me. Without money, there's many things I could not do and that we could not do. But for me, true success, not wealth, but true success um, is actually around, if, you, if I were to define that, I would say in my dictionary, it'd be discover who you are. And day by day, the more you discover, be that person. Yes. And that's it. Discover who you are. And day by day, the more you discover, be that person. So all of a sudden you've stripped away the, the, the pressure of having to have the, that Ferrari and the this and the that, because you know, if you discover who you are and you be that person, you'll probably become wealthy anyway, both in money and relationships and love and making a difference and all the things. And most importantly, your gifts will begin to flow. Because when we're in our own truth, living at our own daily standards, which I didn't say this earlier on, but daily standards come from within us, inside of us. But as we live by this, and this is to me became gold just when I, when I had this realization, is that when we live by our daily standards and we stick to them one day at a time, it keeps us in our truth. It keeps us in our truth. And the longer we stay in our truth, the more of our gifts begin to flow. So if you, ask, if you gave me the short answer to how to become what quote unquote successful, which includes being happy, is because I live by my daily standards and bit by bit my gifts reveal themselves to me. And I put those gifts out into the world. And the world said, have a lot of love, have a lot of money, have a lot of friends and relationships, had a lot of recognition. I was the same person. And Joe, Joel, the thing is, those gifts were with me all of those 17 lean years. But I didn't have the right daily standards or truth to get them out. But they must have been there because you can't get out of the cup what isn't in the cup. They must have been there. It's the same for everybody else. Wow. Yeah, I mean, God instilled them within you, right? Amen. From Amen. birth, they were Amen. there all along. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so true, man. I, I, you know, I, I see a lot of people that are feeling very empty because they're, uh, I call it chasing unicorns, right? That's somebody else's definition of success. Mm. Uh, and it's got to be the saddest <laughs> thing, man, to get to the end of your life realizing that you never lived it. Yeah. Like, you, really, you, are, you know yeah, what I mean? You never lived with the life you were yeah. meant to live. I think Les Brown talks about that thing where he says, you know, at the end of your life and you realize all these, you're dying and all your gifts are dying with you. That's got to be oh, sad. Yeah. That's got to be sad. You got to yeah. feel, I'm dying here, but man, there's so much I wanted to do and be and to share and to give and to love. To me, you know, to be successful, you know, discover you know, what's inside each day and be that each day. Don't, don't be that next week. You don't even know you've got next week. I asked my mother when I was, when I, when I was 13 years old, she was 35 years old. I bet she had goals. I bet she had plans. And like everybody, everybody else who, who died young, and dying young could be 78 if your gifts are still inside of you. So if you, if, you die, if you die young and you haven't got your gifts inside of you, it, it's about, look, today, be who you are. Be your truth. Now, love people you want to love. Give that hug. Give the smile. Make a difference. Add value to someone. Help someone out. Discover more of who you are and then dare to be that person. And I'm not, I'm not being flaky about this. I know the world is a construct and the world will be saying to you, don't be that, conform, walk like this, talk like this, drive one of those cars. If you drive one of those cars, you'll be called successful. So conform. It's just another highway of conformity. What we're saying, reality is, will that make you happy? Probably not. But if you do and be yourself and live by your daily standards and live, live in your truth and live as your true self, you get all the gifts of the world, but you'll be happy along the way. And if you're not happy along the way, tell me. What's the point? Yeah, there's a, there's a quote uh, from Thurman. I remember it was, it, it says, uh, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because Amen. what Amen. the world yeah. needs is people who come alive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, that's brilliant, Joel. Cause you know, there's something I, I talk about when I've got clients, I'm, I'm, a lot of clients I work with their businesses. A lot of times I work with leaders and execs. And um, these leaders and execs, they're just human beings, you know, and often they're saying, you know, they've got all the success materially and there's pressure of the business, but inside they're saying, you know what, I just don't feel I'm, I'm myself. And then when they can confide and just say, I don't think I'm being the real me. Well, when you're 15, the world's giving you praise, but you're not feeling that you're the real you, then something isn't right there. So the world needs you to be you. See, when I woke up to being my truth and living by this daily standard and discover my true self, began to live in that place one day at a time. Guess what? I became a better husband. I became a better father, a better brother, a better friend, better to yep. my community, better to my business, better for the world. So what you've just said is so crucial. It's unbelievably crucial because the world needs you to be you. And you can be detrimental to yourself and the world if you're not you, because you could be the one that changes things if you're you. 
And if you're not the one that changes things, maybe you're the one that wakes up someone that changes things. And through the work that you do here, Joel, on this podcast, maybe someone listen to you each and every day or each and every month does something, say something. Maybe they don't change the world, but they go wake somebody up who does change the world. But none of that happens. That sequence does not happen. It does not occur unless you dare to be you, from it, no, the real you, and shine your own light and be that person. This is crucial. It's beyond you know, what most coaches and teachers uh, talk about. It's about what if, you not, <clears throat> what if you're not being you is detrimental not just to you, but to the world. What if? Yes. Yes, man. I, I ask deep questions uh, quite often. Like who, are, who am I and why am I here? Mm-hmm. And what happens when you die? Right? Like a super deep philosophical yeah. questions that people yeah. shy away from. Yeah. Uh, and what you're asking is like, who are you? Who are you really? Like that's deep, man. That really gets yeah. you thinking. Uh, and, and it's so true. Like purpose is a, is such a, I feel like in, in the coaching world, uh, just from feedback that I get from my clients, uh, that have worked with others, uh, purpose, the topic of purpose seems to be such a gray area for so many people. It's like a lot of people don't know what their purpose is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're lucky enough to, to have uh, stepped into it. And I have friends in a lot of different industries that feel like they've stepped into their purpose. And I do ask them quite often how they found it. I think that a lot of people are, because they're settling, because they don't have standards in their life, uh, they are choosing things that are outside of their true purpose. Uh, yeah. And to step in your purpose can be scary in the beginning, but it's, but it's magnificent once you're in the process. It's, it's an amazing feeling. It is. Yeah, it's awesome. And, that, and that's where, you know, you can revel in that, be, in that being. Because you can get a, a guy or a girl who's made a few million pounds, and we all know people like this who are just not happy because they're not reveling in their being as, as, as you've stated there you get someone else who's you know getting out there fighting the grinding every single day fighting the traffic doing their thing getting the hassle getting rejection and they, they work through the day and they're happy and they get home and they're happy and that impacts their husband or their wife or their children it changes things because that's the space we need to begin to live from it's it's, it's a different level of energy it's different philosophies so when when i wrote <clears throat> My book, yeah, it's really practical. It talks about standards, shifting your standards, setting standards, reviewing your standards, monitoring your standards. Which seven areas of your life should you really focus on? Which seven areas of your business should you really focus on when you look at your daily standards um, reframing? But actually, uh, it also talks about the fact that we have to be happy about living in our truth, about making a difference and being who or, or who we are. See, I don't know. I have my beliefs and my faith, um, but I couldn't tell you uh, Joel, um, any more than the next uh, teacher could tell you. What I have a faith around is that we came from something and we're here to do something. Yes. And the something that we're here to do is inside of us, not outside of us. And if we capture and access that something, we change everything whilst we're here. And then we move on. You know, I've got my belief system, I have a faith. But, you know, I don't think that would tread on anybody's toes, whatever faith you are, that would tread on anybody's toes, I hope. But if you thought about it that way, it means you, you, you come here with stuff inside of you. So your real objective is not to count the green stuff. But here's, here's where it becomes really an amazing... Uh, now, I think God was a genius because he says, hey, the more of, you, more of your talents that you discover and give, the world will reward you even on this physical plane. Wow. The, 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 spiritual, the spiritual rewards you'll get anyway, depends what your belief system is, but you, you, you get rewarded on this physical plane the more you contribute back for what you've already got inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from the shiny objects <laughs> because we can spend so much time uh, thinking that we're doing the right thing, but it's actually the thing that's taking us away from what we're really here to do. And I think that that is like one of the big traps. That's the allure following someone else's dream because we haven't sat with yeah, it yeah. long enough uh, to find out what we're here to do. Absolutely true. No, love it. Absolutely true. Yeah. Hey, mate, this has been such an amazing experience to sit here and to really uh, dive deep with you. We're going to have to do a part two for sure. We're going to have to get you back on the show. Love uh, it. Love to. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, so Joel, thank, just, thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Really, God bless you, mate. I just uh, really appreciate that. I'm here to, to, to share what's inside and you're literally helping me to live what I'm here to do amazing brother amazing hey man i wish i could do that for everyone <laughs> mate you're doing it that's what you're yeah. joel brown you're doing it 
You're doing it. There you go. R- ripple journey, effect. Journey for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Journey for all of us. But you're doing it, trust effect. me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, Derek, uh, thanks a million, mate. Uh, where can we find you online? Online, my uh, access through dailystandards.com. Uh, Daily Standards, no spaces, just dailystandards.com. And um, I'm on Facebook, obviously, you can find me on Facebook, but uh, um, dailystandards.com, and you'll find uh, me and access to the book and my materials through that. Uh, you must have registered that domain name a long time ago because I couldn't imagine getting a domain name like that now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, you know, if, if it's a Google Daily Standards, you've got to go a huge amount of pages to find anything else but me. Because when I realized <laughs> that's, that's awesome. what it was, I just captured it. I did the registration, um, the, um, what do you call it now? The uh, protection registration, the intellectual property protection in Europe and then in, in America. And I just realized I've got something here. And if, the, if daily standards are things we all need to do to achieve our goals, if daily standards determine our success or our failure, people are going to click onto this. And of course they have, which is why you, know, you and I are in the film because your work is, is, is a similar thing. It's just telling people, listen, there's some truths out here. And if you follow these truths, you'll, you'll have a better life. And um, so thank you, Joel, for letting me have this chance to share today. And aim, please, I'd love to do part two. God bless you, mate. Oh, yes. Yes, we will. All right, Derek, uh, before we wrap up the interview, I always end every interview with one last question. And the question is, if you were to deliver your last 30 second speech to the world, what would that last 30 seconds sound like? Learn to love God. Learn to love yourself. Learn to love other people and love them not as a noun as a verb let it be part of who you are and you'll live the richest of lives 